Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not, we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself or himself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered, and he that searcheth the hearts knoweth. He knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know, we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. For whom he did for no, he did also predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that we might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. Whom he called, he also justified. Whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Hallelujah. We that spare, he that spared not his son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Hallelujah. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. There's a blessing in not knowing. Amen. And encapsulated in those verses of scripture. What I want to first point out is what we do know. We do know this from verses 22 and even 23. We know from Romans 8, 22, and 23 that everybody's got issues. Amen? We know this. Amen? We know everybody has issues. Everybody has their own things that they have to deal with individually. Everybody's got their own set of problems, their own devils to deal with. Everybody's got issues. Amen. It says, even we who've tasted of the first fruits of the spirit, even we, it says, uh, you know, looking forward to one day, hallelujah, having a glorified body. Because as you get a little older, these bodies, amen, they remind you every now and then that you haven't made it to heaven just yet. Amen. Hallelujah. We know this. Amen. Hallelujah. That's one of the things that we know. We know, hallelujah, that everybody has issues. I'm going to um, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. It says this, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. There's some stuff that we deal with that everybody's got to deal with. It's common to man. Amen. Everybody's got something that they have to deal with. Amen. Jesus said that he guarantees, hallelujah, that offenses will come. Something's going to happen. Everybody's got issues. We know that. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, this is what it says in verse 27. This is what we don't know. This is what we know not. We don't always know how to pray, what to say, how to pray about the issues that everybody deals with every day. Amen? Hallelujah. Have you ever found yourself in a position where you didn't know what to say and what to pray about a situation? Somebody, I, I know somebody once came to me and says, pray for my son. My son just got arrested. And, you know, what I'm thinking initially is, well, did he do it? <laughs> you know and and the and the case was he was guilty so somebody is asking me to pray for their son who's guilty of doing something wrong to somebody else do i pray for him to get off do i pray for him to get a short sentence do i pray for him to get what he's supposed to get so he learn his lesson i don't know what to pray i don't know what to say there are times when you don't know what to pray how to pray about it amen hallelujah this is something we it's a and it's a blessing in this knowing not hallelujah knowing that you don't know there's a blessing in knowing what you don't know it's called being poor in spirit amen 
Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, verse 3, it says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Being poor in spirit is not being poor in your pockets. Amen. Being poor in, in your spirit, being poor in spirit is being to a point where you know I can't do this. I don't know this. I need God's help. And there's a blessing in getting to a position and point where you say, I know I need God's help. Amen. 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 Imagine, if you will, that you get a phone call from the IRS. And the IRS calls you and says, I need you to pay $5,000 by next week or you're going to jail. What are you going to do? You're gonna check. <laughs> You're going to check your banking account. You're going to check your, you know, can I borrow against life insurance? Do I have this in my account? Do I have some friends I can call? Hey, mama, what you, you got some money? Oh, you don't have 5000 You got 1000 Okay, I'll take one. And you're going to go around trying to make it happen, trying to make it work, stressing, struggling, straining to come up with this money that you need to come up with right now. But let's say the IRS called you and says, I need you to come up with $5 million by next week or you're going to jail. Well, okay. No need me stressing over it. Ain't nothing I can do about it. Anything short from a miracle from God, it ain't going to happen. So why should I worry? All I can do is pray and hope and believe and trust God to do it. That's what it means to be poor in spirit, where you say, I can't do this without you. So I'm not going to carry the burden. I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to stress. I'm not going to strain my brain trying to figure out what only you can work out. And see, if you know that there's some things that you just don't know, amen, you'll put your dependency on God. That's the blessing of knowing not, the blessing of knowing what you don't know. Amen? Amen. There's a blessing in knowing what you don't know. If you don't know what to say, what to pray, hallelujah, then you know that the only way that you're going to be able to pray right and say the right things is by the Holy Spirit leading you and guiding you. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. That's the blessing of knowing what you don't know. Amen? Now, verse 28 it tells us what we need to know. So we got what we know, which is everybody's got issues. We got what we don't know. We don't always know what to say, what to pray, how to pray about it. And now we're coming to what we need to know. What we need to know, hallelujah, from verse 28, is that the Spirit makes intercession for us. With groanings which cannot be uttered. Amen. Hallelujah. Speaking in unknown tongues. It's a, it's a gift that God has given us for when we know not. When we just don't know what to say. We just don't know what to pray. We don't know how to pray about it. Hallelujah. What we need to do is God has given us the ability to pray when we don't know what to pray and don't know what to say. It's called praying in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praying in the spirit. Amen. Going back to being poor in spirit. Amen. You, when you go, you know, if you get a little tickle in your throat, <laughs> go, you know, you buy some over the counter stuff and it, it don't quite work. And so eventually, ultimately, you find yourself going to the doctor's office. You go to the doctor's office and the doctor offer doctor gets out a piece of paper, well now it's on a computer, but it used to be the doctor would get, on, get out a piece of paper, this little notepad, and write something out. He'd write something out. He might say uh, acetylcysteine, um, one to two 
tablets, Q4 hours, PRN. And you, and you say, okay, I don't even know what this is. You know, acetylcysteine, BID, PRN, what does that mean? But you take that little piece of paper that this doctor scribbled out and you don't know what it means. You take it to a pharmacist that you probably never met before. And that pharmacist goes to the back and puts together some ingredients. You don't know what it is. You don't know what's in there. And then comes out and gives it to you and says, put this in your mouth twice a day, every day for the next five days. And you take this, this stuff that the doctor wrote out, you know, didn't know what he was writing, and he gave it to the pharmacist, and you didn't know who they were, and they put some stuff in a bottle, and you didn't know what it is, and you put it in your mouth. You put it in your mouth religiously. It's, it's, it's 8 o'clock. I got to put I got to take my medicine. You put it at I, I, I clockwork. You put it in your mouth. You don't know what it is, but you put it in your mouth because you trust that the doctor knows what they're talking about and the pharmacist knows what it is that the doctor was saying. That's the same way it is with praying in the Holy Ghost. Amen? Well, you take what the Holy Spirit gave you to say. And you take it to the Father. And you trust that the Holy Spirit knew what you needed. Hallelujah. And the Father knows how to make it happen. And you put it in your mouth. Hallelujah. Sometimes twice a day. Sometimes three times a day. Hallelujah. You put it in your mouth. Why? Because I know eventually, ultimately, it's going to work for me. I don't know what it is I'm saying. I don't know what it is God is doing. But I'm putting it in my mouth. Hallelujah. Because I know not what to say on my own hallelujah and I don't know how to pray about this thing hallelujah that's the blessing of not knowing hallelujah because you need to know he knows the spirit of God makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered hallelujah groanings groanings which cannot be uttered i can't you can't make this up amen, amen? amen. now i've seen people try to fake tongues <laughs> amen amen cc my bow tie amen and, you know the people make up some stuff amen how can i how can i say amen that's what, that's what little jerry used to say how can i how can i say amen <laughs> you can make something up amen but it ain't gonna work the same hallelujah you gotta trust that god is gonna put his words in your mouth even though you don't know what you're saying or what you're praying but you know he knows hallelujah you know he knows how to make intercession for us according to the will of God verse 28 says this and we know See, if you know, hallelujah, that the Holy Spirit makes intercession for us according to the will of God, then this is what you will know. You will know, hallelujah, that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are called according to his purpose amen hallelujah if you know hallelujah that god is working it out for you hallelujah you know that god himself is praying for you hallelujah then you'll also know that your spirit man hallelujah the spirit man that searches the hearts knows what's in the mind of the holy spirit so your spirit is communicating with the Holy Spirit and praying directly to, hallelujah, the one that knows how to get a prayer through. Amen? Hallelujah. 
Your spirit man, hallelujah, knows what's going on in you. He's called the candle of the Lord, hallelujah, and he searches out the inward parts of the belly. He knows what's in you, what's going on with you. He knows your issues, your problems, your, your frailties, your inabilities, your infirmities, as it says. And so he then intercommunicates with the Spirit of God because the Spirit of God knows what's in the mind of God. The Spirit of man knows what the issues of man are. Hallelujah. And so the Spirit of man speaks and prays according to what the Spirit of God tells him to pray and tells him to say. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, I think I've said this before. I'm going to have you go there real quick. Let's go to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. There's a blessing in knowing what you don't know. Because if you know that you don't know, then you will put your dependency on the one that you know does know. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. And I think we'll go down to verse 8. It says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one, with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born. It shows here that on the day of Pentecost, 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ walked among the people after he rose from the dead for 40 days, the Bible says. And then after he resurrected and then ascended, the disciples waited for the remaining I guess it would be seven days because he was, no, no, ten days because he, he told them to wait for the promise of the Father. The great commission is go ye therefore teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. The greater commission is wait. Before you go, wait. Wait for the promise of the Father so he can give you what you need to be effective in ministry. Hallelujah. And they were waiting anticipating something to happen and the Bible says that the Spirit of God fell on them. Hallelujah. And everybody started speaking in an unknown tongue. The Spirit of God sat upon each of them and cloven tongues as fire sat on each of them. Hallelujah. And each of them began to pray. They spake. They spake. They spake. He won't make you speak. They spake, hallelujah, and then the Spirit began to speak through them, hallelujah, as they prayed in an unknown language, in an unknown tongue. Unknown tongues go up. Say, unknown tongues go up. Unknown tongues go up. Hallelujah. And then as the unknown tongues go up, hallelujah, because prayer is communication hallelujah god then begins to send messages down diverse tongues come down 
unknown tongues went up when you pray in an unknown tongue you pray not unto man you pray directly to God your understanding is unfruitful you don't know what you're saying but diverse tongues come down so that after they prayed unknown tongues up diverse tongues came down and everybody could understand what everybody was saying in their own native language they weren't speaking different languages languages they were speaking hallelujah what you can't everybody everybody can't say different languages at one time one person can't speak different languages at one time but everybody could hear the message in their own native tongue there was tongues and interpretation of tongues going on hallelujah because they spoke in an unknown tongue they surrender their knowledge of what to say and how to pray to speak unknown tongues up and then God sent messages down in diverse tongues so everybody could understand amen, amen. hallelujah if you know what you don't know and do what you know to do even though you don't know what you're saying you do know what you're doing then God will speak down to you and talk to you about what you're going through and tell you what to say and what to pray amen, amen. hallelujah I feel like Paul sometimes. Paul said, I thank God I speak with tongues more than you all. Why? Because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. But God knows what he's doing. So I put my dependency on him and I speak with unknown tongues up and I wait for a, a diverse tongue, a message to come down. My wife would tell you yesterday, she said, what are you preaching tomorrow? I said, I don't know. Amen. I didn't know that that was the message. I don't know. There's a blessing in. I don't know. There's a blessing in. I don't know. Because if you admit what you don't know. Hallelujah. Then you're open to hear what the Holy Spirit does know hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your spirit makes intercession. Hallelujah. For you. The spirit of man makes intercession for you according to the will of God because he knows what's in the mind of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And all these things work together for the good of them that love God and are called according to your pur his purpose. Hallelujah. If you pray in an unknown tongue, you don't know what you're saying and you don't, but you do know what you're doing and you come out with a peace of knowing it's going to be all right. It's going to work out. How do you know? I don't know, but it's going to work. Hallelujah. That's what you need to know. Hallelujah. Because what he knows, it says, he knows us before we were born, whom he predestinated. Whom he predestinated. It's in 29, excuse me. For whom he did foreknow. He did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Amen. Hallelujah. See, what he knows is your end before your beginning. He knows the end, the beginning, and everything that you're going to go through in between. Amen. Hallelujah. See, sometimes he'll let us know the end, but we don't get to know what's in the middle until we go through it. Amen. Because sometimes if we knew what was in the middle before the end, we'd never make it to the end. Because if we saw what was in the middle, we'd have gone back to the beginning. But he who foreknows predestinates, hallelujah, 
predestinates us to be conformed to the image of his son. In other words, hallelujah, when you finish praying and believing, hallelujah, you go come out of this and people ain't even go see you. What they go see is Jesus all over you. Hallelujah. When the father looks at me, he don't see what I used to be. He sees Jesus all over me. Hallelujah. Because the world wants to see how do you go through the issues and problems that everybody goes through. Hallelujah. God foreknows what you're going through. And he predestinates that you're going to come out, hallelujah, with the victory. Hallelujah. Yes. And the world wants to see, hallelujah, how are you going to come out? My wife just alluded to the story. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego cast in a burning fiery furnace. And the king, the evil, sinful king, said, didn't we throw three folks in there bound? Why do I see somebody else in there? I see a fourth man in there. I see they're in there loosed. And it looks that fourth man looks like the son of God. Hallelujah. When you come out of this, you'll be conformed to the image of his son. Hallelujah. And folks will see, I see something different on you. It looks like the son of God. Hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah. It looks like the Son of God. And they came out without even the smell of smoke on their clothes. Hallelujah. Because the fourth man, hallelujah, the Son of God, hallelujah, manifested himself. God wants you to come out, conform to the image of his Son. Hallelujah. He knows you're going to come out. Hallelujah. We need to figure out what he knows. Hallelujah. He knows what he foreknew and he predestinated. Hallelujah. For us to be conformed to. Oh, hallelujah. We're going to come out with the testimony. God is on you. Have you ever had somebody tell you you're blessed? God is with you. Amen. You didn't say a word. You didn't have to go up with your big cross on and, you know, <laughs> amen, and tell folks, I'm a Christian. Now, people just say, you, you saved, ain't you? You saved, ain't you? You, you, you? you saved, ain't you? People can see Jesus on you. Amen. We're being conformed to the image of his son so that people just know, amen, hallelujah, Jesus is on you, amen, hallelujah. That's what God predestinated and foreknew was going to happen before you went through what you went through and didn't know what to say and how to pray about it, amen, hallelujah, whom he predestinated, he called. Whom he called, he justified. Whom he justified, hallelujah, he glorified. God wants to glorify you so you can turn around and glorify him. The Bible says this, hallelujah, wisdom will give you as an ornament of grace a crown of glory. But the crown of glory is not for you to put on your head. It's for you to lay it at his feet. He wants to glorify you, hallelujah, so you can then glorify him. Hallelujah. That's what he knew was going to happen when he foreknew you and predestinated you and conformed you and called you and justified you. Hallelujah. To glorify you. Woo. Hallelujah. That's what he knew. That's what he knows. Hallelujah. And if we figure out what he knows, this is what we'll know. We'll know, hallelujah, that if God be for us, who can be against us? And we'll know that if he spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, 
he will freely give us all things. He said he wants to give us all things that pertain to life and godliness. He wants to give us all things to enjoy. We can know that this is going to benefit us and bless us in the end if we know the blessing of knowing what we don't know. Amen? Amen. Knowing what we don't know opens us up to what he knows. Just referring back to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, it says, Blessed are the poor in spirit. Folks that know that they don't know, know that they don't have it, know that they can't do it by themselves. Because theirs is the kingdom of God. If you know that you don't know it all, but know who does know it all, then you can be trusted to be blessed with it all. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you. We thank you and praise you, Heavenly Father, for teaching us. Hallelujah. We're learning about the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The one who causes us to know in our knower. Hallelujah. That Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father God, for revealing to us. Hallelujah. That when we don't know what to say and how to pray, the Spirit himself will make intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Hallelujah. And cause us to pray for things that we don't know and say things hallelujah that we can't understand but you understand hallelujah and you're filling the prescription right now hallelujah to give us what we need hallelujah we thank you father hallelujah because we know we don't know it all but we know that you do so we put our trust, our confidence, our faith in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. By praying in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. You don't need somebody to lay hands on you. You don't need somebody to tell you what to say. Hallelujah. You don't need to... Wait for 10 days like the early apostles did. Hallelujah. All you have to do is open your mouth and let your voice come out. And as you begin to say hallelujah, the Holy Spirit will get, begin to pray through your spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. And it might seem foolish. It might seem funny. It might seem weird. Hallelujah. But anything new seems weird. Hallelujah. Anything different seems weird, but it's not weird. Hallelujah. It's you tapping into the Holy Spirit's well, hallelujah, and reserve for you that he has for you to tell you things that you don't know. Hallelujah, and to give you information that right now you might not be able to understand. Hallelujah, just let your voice come out. Hallelujah, and you, hallelujah, can start your own revival. Hallelujah, by praying in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. He'll give you what to say, what to pray, hallelujah, when you don't know what to say or how to pray about it. Hallelujah. And he'll give you, as you send unknown tongues up, he'll give you a diverse tongue down, hallelujah. So you start off praying to him, but you end up saying what the Holy Spirit is saying to you. So that you get answers from on high. Hallelujah. Because he knows. He knows the end before the beginning. He knows 
what we're going through. He knows what we need. He knows what we lack. He knows where the answer is. He knows all things. So I know what I don't know. So I can trust the one who knows it all. Pastor Jerry and Shavella Gatson welcome you to attend worship services at the Ornament of Grace Christian Center, 121 Express Drive, Sweet C, Lansing, Kansas. Join us every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and Wednesday evening at 6.30 p.m. My Bible says, hallelujah, he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. For more information, call 913-240-6262. The Ornament of Grace Christian Center, where God's grace is sufficient for you.